Hello friends, welcome back to the channel. Uh, please check out Dixieland RC, RC Addict, and Darkside 3D Printing. Um, they are small businesses, they are awesome people, and they do honestly do a ton for our hobby that we love so much. Um, so please, take a minute, check them out. Um, nothing else, give them a like on Facebook, and just keep up with them. So, today, friends, oh, one huge thing. Uh, if you have not yet, go check out 11 Charlie RC. They do some amazing things for veterans. Um, they're awesome people. They're really all brothers, okay? Check them out. Uh, that's huge. Please do that. Um, today, we're talking about the Boom Racing D110 uh, chassis. This come with a D110 truck body. We're not talking about the, the body itself. The, the body themselves are very nice. They're detailed. Uh, you can build them how you want, essentially, and customize and fix or do whatever, okay? We're not getting into that. We are talking about the mechanical side of things, though. This, of course, does not come with electronics, okay? So the electronics you see, ignore. doesn't come that way. Anything. Any of it, okay? <laughs> so, um, we are going to talk about all the mechanicals and what this truck comes with, and is it any good visually and just knowledge wise okay uh, a lot of what's on this truck is nothing new um you know it's used somewhere else or whatnot so but we're going to go over it as a whole all right now this is initial thoughts real quick i want you to take everything with a grain of salt all right repeat that to yourself take this video with a grain of salt not every single person that gets this truck is going to have the experience I did. I'm going to flat out tell you my truck was a Monday or Friday truck. And that guy must have quit whatever day after he did this because he didn't care. It's plain and simple. That's what it amounts to. Um, I don't look at this truck and say boom racing is low quality. Uh, I look at this truck as in whoever did the QA on this truck, if there was any, um, or whoever's in charge of these before they go out the door did not do their job. So take this video with a grain of salt and some of this stuff, not all of it, you know, some of it, take it with a grain of salt, but the rest of it, take it to heart because there's some facts here I'm going to split out to you that they are nothing more than facts. It's proven. It's, it is what it is. Okay. First, before we get on anything real big, I'm going to talk about drive shafts, which is actually huge. Um, I'm a huge advocate for drive shafts that um, are phased properly, number one. Uh, the truck comes with metal drive shafts. They are Boom Racing Voodoo drive shafts. Not to be confused with the other Voodoo drive shafts. Uh, these are Boom Racing Voodoo drive shafts, all right? Now, Boom Racing Voodoo drive shafts, I'm going to give you one up close here because it is important to know the difference so you know what you're getting. Boom Racing Voodoo drive shafts come with brass inserts, okay? Also, they are eclipped. Okay, they have one pin that goes through them that are e-clipped. What happens is that pin, uh, that pin actually holds in your other pin. It retains it. So they're not press fit or anything like that. If you pull this e-clip, you pull that pin out, the other pin will drop out as well. So also, uh, splines are not very heavy duty on it. And, you know, how it actually goes together itself, if you look at the metals, like down around the bottom here, it's kind of hard to pick up in the camera. They're very thin. You know, the actual contact points are thin. So, and to compare that, this is a Boom Racing Badass shaft. Um, it is super, uh, super durable, super quality. Uh, and we'll put them side by side here. Now, this is brass, or not brass. This is steel inserts quality. These are press fit. There's zero Eclipse. And we can see the quality difference right here. Okay. A huge difference between these. Both Boom Racing, Voodoo, and Badass. All right? Uh, the Badass drive shafts phase absolutely perfectly. Okay? That is a huge thing with them. Uh, where these ones do not, as close as you're going to get them. Let me get this one. That's as close as you can get it. And however it may look good, it is not perfectly phased. It is off slightly. Uh, and this is actually the best one that came on the truck. This is off the truck. I replaced it with a badass drive shaft. You'll see it later. Um, but uh, that is kind of 
you know, where things are at. So, now we're going to move on. Now we are going to talk axles. Okay. So, these are the Boom Racing V2 scale fat axles. All right. I did a teardown of these axles in a couple videos ago. Okay. I'll put a link in the description of this video to that video. So if you want to see the internals and what these axles actually are, you can check that video out. I'm not going to do it now for this one. So the, the fat axles, and I'll highlight a couple of things here. Then I'll tell you a couple of things that was messed up with mine from the get-go. Uh, fat axles are uh, a solid shaft. It goes from, oh, let me get it in the camera here. Solid shaft, it goes from here to here, okay? They're not pieces like a normal axle. So it goes solid through, it rides on a pin for the gear. Uh, you can see here that this piece slides on to that axle that goes through. So these are replaceable. So from here to the axle stub. So the universal to the axle stub is replaceable. It's They're cheap. It's a... Uh, you get both sides for like 10 bucks, okay? They're dirt cheap. And with that being said, uh, if you look inside of, let me get it turn here. If you look inside, you can actually see uh, the brass insert that you've seen on the uh, Voodoo drive shaft. So that already tells you you're not going to have super durability with these axles. All right, they do ride on brass inserts for the knuckle C hub, so that's good. Um, but they're they're cheap to repay, re, you know, they're cheap to fix. Uh, also, th the link mount that comes on these is a pot metal. They're dirt cheap. They bust. You'll find tr pictures of these trucks all over the place with the uh, with the links hanging and stuff like that on the truss still because the truss broke right off. The link mount broke right off. Um, moving on. Oh, the front. Uh, we talked about this being a Monday or Friday truck. The front uh, CV that I just showed you, actually, I had it in the camera the whole time. You may have seen the pin was out of it. This is the pin. All right. It was in the truck, but they never put an E-clip on it from the factory. Uh, I threw a battery in this. Th these axles have never been ran outside. They have like two seconds of carpet run time on them. And I heard the axle clicking and popping, and what it was was the C-clip wasn't in, so this pin was trying to fall out, and it was catching the uh, C-hub. So, my rear axle, of course, is the exact same concept. Pot metal, uh, link mount, and that link actually does the, the upper links and the lower links. So, it's one piece. And you can buy upgrade. It's, uh, I think, like 20 bucks for the front and rear uh, separately okay twenty dollars each um so it's it's fairly cheap to fix this and there is a quality part this machined aluminum but what i want you to look at here is we talk about axles okay hopefully the camera wants to focus here for me It'd be great i want you to see this axle hopefully the camera picks it up <laughs> you see that that's how she came to me See that nice crooked? Yeah. So the axle's bent. That is stainless steel, and quite honestly, stainless steel is not a place you put or use an axle. Okay? Um, so I bumped the camera there. I just fixed it. My focus, autofocus was turned off for some reason. So hopefully the whole video don't end up out of focus. But um, So I have a bent axle. Okay, that's brand new out of the box. Um, I certainly didn't do it. And the box had zero damage on it whenever I unboxed it. So. But, um, yeah. And, and quite honestly, I'm not running these axles anyway. So it's not a big, big deal. But it is. I mean, I paid for a, a new truck that wasn't messed up. So, now we're going to talk about this bearing carrier. Uh, and this extension, okay? This goes straight to the transfer case. Mine is crooked by a millimeter, okay? So where this is right here to here is a millimeter off. So that 
shaft is running on an angle. Okay, the problem with that is that'll destroy the bearing. And it's also so will um, wiggle out the pin that's through the transfer case. Um, so that's bad the whole way around. Now, in my next video, I'll show you what I do to remedy it. But essentially, uh, either the machining is off in the bearing carrier, the edge of the aluminum, and it either needed to shift that direction, or the hole through for the actual bearing itself needed to shift slightly. And we're talking one millimeter exactly. And I made sure everything was perfectly square. The transfer case was square. Everything was perfectly square. No matter what I did, I could not pick that millimeter up. It is literally where things are machined at. So um, I did talk to Boom Racing about it. And I'm supposed to have a new bearing carrier on the way. He feels that it is machined wrong. So hopefully it shows up. Um, also, while we're talking about things that are just uh, off, uh, I had a transmission mount that was stripped out. Um, from the factory, the screws weren't even fully in it. The screws were hanging out. I went to go put the screws in, and I could push the one screw in, and it would just sit there and bounce back and forth on me. So I knew it was trashed. Um, thankfully, uh, I had an RC four-wheel drive mount I put in place, and you can actually see here. I'll show it while we're talking about it. I'll just show it to you. Um, you can see actually the different metal colors. Okay, that's RC four-wheel drive. Uh, the one that was in it was more of this glossier. Um, this is more of a textury aluminum feel. Uh, the RC four wheel drive is definitely a higher quality aluminum, a higher quality machine. But, um, you know, the old one would have been fine had it not been stripped out in the factory. So I also am supposed to have a new one of those coming too. So we'll see, but uh, you know, just that's gonna be pretty obvious for the, 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 the transmission mount. Just check yours. Make sure all your screws tighten down. It's not a big deal. Uh, for the bearing carrier, uh, make sure everything's perfectly square. Okay, make sure your bearing carrier is square. Make sure your transfer case is square. Make sure your mount down here is square. And after you've done and made sure everything's perfectly square, you can pull a measurement from here, pull a measurement from here, Go to one side or the other of the chassis rails. If everything's square, it really doesn't matter which one you go to. And you should come up with the exact same measurement between here and here. So, you know, the two ends of the shaft uh, should come up perfect. If you're perfect, then you are good to go. If you're not perfect, then, like I say, watch the next video. I'll show you how to fix that. So, uh, we're going to talk about links now since we got it upside down. You can still see the links. A lot of my links were either the wrong length and the wrong spot or literally just completely the wrong length and wouldn't work for nothing. So thankfully between all the spare stuff I have and whatnot, I had enough to fix the front up. Uh, the links themselves are not terrible and they do come with the, uh, these are essentially boom racing rod ends. Uh, they may be labeled as raffy, and you can buy raffy ones, but they are the exact same as the boom racing ones. So these are not junk rod ends. Um, these are actually higher quality rod ends than what you get on an RC four wheel drive. So that's good. Um, moving on down the line here, uh, we're going to talk, since I still got it upside down, we're going to talk pinion angles. All right, this is how this truck come. Everything is in the exact same location. And what I want you to look at, whenever we talk pinion angles, we're talking about the angle of our pinion gear, the, the back shaft of the pinion gear, where it's coming out at and the angle that it has. So let me see if we can get this in the camera for you. I'll tell you what I might do. That's pretty decent, uh, at least from... What I'm looking at now we can already tell that we have a major difference in pinion angle between the front and rear okay our front pinion angle is facing towards the ground 
okay, if this would be sitting the way it would driving down the road. The front pinion is facing downward, while the rear pinion, as we can see, is tucked up under the links. Actually, on the other side, it's facing up. So that right there tells you that we have an issue going on, okay? We should be the exact same pinion angle on this truck, should be very close. We should have straight in line with the transfer case, okay? They should be straight perfectly, just one lower or higher, however you want to look at it, than the other. But they should be straight in line with each other to give us the correct pinion angles. Uh, this is not, obviously. And what it is, is this mount, lower mount, okay, the transfer case mount, needs slid back, the skid plate, okay? It needs slid one screw hole set back. The problem, if you go and do that, is you then changed your extension for your bearing carrier, that's going to drive that back, that one screw length. So you may need some more shims in here, but it's also going to change. Uh, if you've seen this whenever I originally had it in there, there wasn't much space. Okay, there was really a little amount of space. So you're going to make that more extreme. So my next video will really show you how to fix all that. But that's something to look at, folks. Make sure everything is, your pinion angle should be good. Okay, you need to really check that. And if I need to do more in-depth video on opinion angles and what that affects, uh, please let me know in the comments section because I can really get more in-depth with that if need be. I'd rather not, but I can if you need it. So, but that's extremely important. Okay, folks, I can't emphasize it enough. Extremely important, pinion angle. So, uh, next, shocks. We'll touch shocks real briefly. I will tell you the pan hard mount, just so you know, is aluminum on this as well. Shocks, all right. Uh, the shocks are aluminum and they are made for oil. They do ship as a lot of trucks do without oil inside of them. So you will need oil. Now you can see this shock. Um, I don't know if the camera's picking it up or not, but is actually leaking right now. And it was tightened, it was put together. And whenever I went to go pick it up to move it, it popped the threads and you know, they're, the machine quality is not superb on these shocks whatsoever. Uh, until now, these shocks have held and I've had no problems with them. And it has been run with a different set of axles on it, just for test purposes and whatnot. The rear shocks um, do have limiters in it. Okay, so if you take the shock caps off, you take the bottom of the shock off and actually pull the bottom of the shock up. You'll actually find spacers that they had underneath it. And what that's to do is to give it the proper ride height. And they're running a longer shock. The reason they're not running a shorter shock is because they need this length here to stop the shock up travel so that it doesn't hit the mount or the uh, mounting plate in the back, the metal plate. Okay? So let's keep it from hitting this metal plate you're seeing right here. Keeps the upper lengths from hitting that. So that's why they need the shock length they have and then they are just limiting it from falling down too far. So just so you know, there is limiters in there, so it may take you a little bit more to get it all bled out if you're getting the air out of your shocks. All right, now moving on to the transmission. This truck comes with, they call them pineapple uh, helical cut gears, okay? The pinion and spur is cut the the teeth are on a slight angle as you can see the concept behind that is getting a um, more surface area for added strength the problem is uh, and rc four wheel drives do this exact same thing as well is whenever you have this type of setup a uh, it's not common so you're not just going to go find these gears on the shelf if you mess one up and B, it doesn't allow much tolerance. So just the slightest amount of pressure, okay? I'm wiggling the motor itself, all right? That, that spur gear ain't moving. I'm moving the pinion. So that gear design is really needing everything to be perfectly straight and aligned. If not, you're going to start chipping teeth up. So that right there proves to you and shows you any kind of stress that the drivetrain gets. 
that motor getting locked up and, and pushing against the actual motor mount itself can cause that. Uh, so, you know, durability wise, you're better off with a more conventional uh, pinion and spur than what the, this is. So my word of advice would be to upgrade that to a, you can just, if you wanted to just make it simple, you get an RC four wheel drive. Cause this is a clone of the RC four wheel drive R three transmission. Okay. So just to, just to kind of give you an idea, you could buy the gears from one of those and slap right in this and it'll work perfect. So go through, grease everything, check everything for tightness. I'll lock tight everything. Keep in mind you are working with something that is all metal. There's really not any plastic on this truck, which is nice. Um, check for uh, strip stuff. The hardware all seem to be fairly decent quality, okay? Uh, much better than RC four-wheel drive. Uh, put some oil in the shocks. Um, and essentially after that, you know, it... it this truck in its, uh, you know, not Friday or Monday state like mine is, uh, is fairly solid to be truthful with you. Just changing the dry shafts on it will make it 10 times better. I honestly, just like I say, I think I got a truck that was just made on the wrong day. Um, so I hope this gives you some insight, some initial thoughts on this truck and, um, if you have questions or, um, you know, if your experience is much different than mine, please let me know in the comments. Uh, I do know that there are some good experiences with this platform out there. Uh, that's not uh, escaped me whatsoever. I was kind of surprised and shocked by how much stuff I found on mine. Because uh, literally everything from front to back, I found something on it that was not correct or substantially messed up to some degree. So, uh, keep positive friends. Um, uh, I am enjoying this truck. Uh, trust me, the next video you see of this truck will be completely different of what you see right now. So keep positive friends. Uh, keep an eye out for the next video. Uh, thank you all so much for staying with me for so long. Um, never thought I'd be where I am now for subscribers and I appreciate you all. I seriously do. You all take care. Have a great day. See you in the next one.